since we are broadcasting this on the internet, as many of our concerts, the orchestra last night and the jazz band tonight at uh, 7.30, uh, they asked me to use this because that's the only way these cameras can pick it up. Uh, it is great pleasure. This gentleman retired from being the director of the President's Own Marine Band in Washington, D.C. in 1996, and then he started working here. Uh, he is a graduate of Loyola University, French horn major, and as he says, in the Jurassic Age. Uh, in fact, he has a French horn up on a wall. It's not the one he used, but uh, he thinks he's going to scare a few people to pull it down one day and try to play it. Uh, but it is always a great pleasure to have him here work. We do a lot of his works that are now being published, and I'm, I'm sure it's over 60 or 70 publications at this point. And uh, it has really have been a pleasure to have him working. I think the kids will also agree that uh, he's a walking encyclopedia, and it's a great pleasure to have him come and conduct the band and the uh, Wind Ensemble and Concert Band. So without further ado, Colonel John Bushwell.
Welcome to our animation today. We're joined by uh, Colonel John Bourgeois and Dr. Joe Abel. Dr. Abel is the director of bands at Loyola and has been director of bands for the past 40 years. And uh, John Bourgeois. Welcome to our animation today. We're joined by uh, Colonel John Bourgeois and Dr. Joe Abel. Dr. Abel is the director of bands at Loyola and has been director of bands for the past 40 years. And uh, John Bourgeois was, is the emeritus conductor of a United States Marine Band stationed in Washington. And they are known as the President's Own because they performed at the White House often and provided all the music at the White House. So, um, uh, welcome to our intermission today. Thank you. Thank you. Um, can you talk talk to us about the program? Uh, we've we've already heard uh, the first half, and I think you performed on that first half, uh, uh, Colonel Bourgeois. Would you like to talk about those works? Huh? Yeah, I'm, uh, the, uh, what you've heard uh, are two dances from Swan Lake. It's a group of four characteristic dances, national dances. There's an an, an Italian dance, a Hungarian dance, a Spanish dance, and a mazurka. We will hear two, we've heard two, and we'll hear one on the second mm -hmm. portion of the concert. And these are transcriptions for band. And actually, uh, these performances are the very first performances. I've just finished the transcriptions. And uh, historically, bands introduced uh, classical music to the American public through m rather than orchestras because they were a portable element of, uh, of music. And so that tradition, which we've always had in the Marine Band, I'm trying to transfer here to my alma mater. I see. So these were orchestral works that you uh, yeah. transcribed for, for concert for, band. For concert band. I see. Uh, well, um, tell us about the particular challenges of, of that. I mean, to take an orchestral work and, and take out the strings, who takes right. the string part? Well, that's, uh, there's no automatic process. You can look at the piece and say, what uh, are the most recognizable aspects, usually if they're wind play, uh, playing parts, solo flutes, solo clarinets, as you will hear in some of these pieces. But the string parts, uh, you'll find that the harmonies all fit together, and it's the same thing uh, in a band. If You can recognize the piece, hopefully. I see. Well, we'll look forward to that. Um, so, uh, well, let's ask Dr. Abair. You, you, um, you've been the, the, the director of bands for so long, you've, you've obviously uh, developed a particular approach to concert programming. You want to tell us about why you picked this particular material? Well, first of all, uh, John started with us in 1996 uh, wow. as a visiting guest conductor, lecturer. So we always include a couple of the pieces that he has done. He sends them down, we read through them. If there are some uh, incorrect notes, we go through it. So it's a great learning process for our students. But usually on the concert, I'll try to start off as you saw uh, with a overture like Candy and then I will bring our guest conductor out and then uh, for the spring I try to feature one of our students and as you heard Rhapsody in Blue brilliantly performed by Jesse uh, Reeks uh, and then we go into what we call the concert band. The concert band uh, is a little different from the wind ensemble in that the wind ensemble is a very select group, a true, I uh, emphasize the word true, wind ensemble, meaning only 50 to 52 players, depending on how many percussion instruments we need. Whereas the concert band is anyone, everyone from the university. They do not have to be a music major. In fact, some of the people in the wind ensemble also perform in a concert band on a different instrument. Really? Uh, to try to help out the saxophone players who really need to learn how to double on flute and clarinet. They'll play saxophone in the wind ensemble and play flute or clarinet in the concert band. Is there a different repertoire for these two different? Yes, entirely different repertoire. In fact, we don't repeat. Uh, I find it difficult to repeat anything uh, in less than seven or eight years. Huh. You know, I will let think. You kind of get tired of, yeah. of certain things. Uh, we invite a composer down each year. We had uh, a gentleman by the name of Mark Camphouse 
who is here in March. We invite three to five high school bands that uh, must send an audition tape. They must play one selection by the visiting composer. The visiting composer works with that band for a half hour, no ratings. It's a great educational adventure for the kids. And we do an hour concert of just the music of that composer. And I have to tell you, after doing an hour's worth of that composer's, regardless of who it is, you get a little tired of it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you don't want to play that composer for another three, four years. Right. We're not telling Mr. Camphouse. <laughs> yeah, without telling uh, yeah, Mr. Camphouse that. No, it was enjoyable to, to have him down here. Yes. But the, the second group that, that you will hear is the concert band. And towards the end, we have a, a group that uh, everyone thoroughly enjoys. That I could play in. Uh, that you <laughs> could play in. That group is called the Wednesday Morning Method Class Bad Band. All those people who are in the Bachelor of Music Education degree must learn how to play all the different instruments that are in band uh, and orchestra. So uh, let's say they are a trumpet major. They have to learn all the woodwind instruments. Right. So they spend about six weeks on all the major components of the woodwind section, strings and brass. Well, we get them together on Wednesday morning and uh, they play. And it is really interesting as you will see. You know, they really enjoyed and I think the audience thoroughly enjoyed. In fact, I know of people who come to these concerts just so they can hear the Wednesday morning bad band. <laughs> <laughs> you ever had a, that reminds me of a, when I was a, a, a student, uh, there were community bands. Uh, what do you think about that? Should, should we have a community band in this community? Oh, well, we, we have we do. several of them. Oh, good. <laughs> Tell us about that. Yes, you have the New Orleans Concert Band, which rehearses at the University of New Orleans. We have the Crescent City Wind Symphony, which is rehearses here at Loyola. Then we have the American Legion Band in Metairie, American Legion Band in Gretner. Then we also have the St. Charles Parish Community Band. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, the community band is the fastest growing organization in the United States. Mm -hmm. This summer, in July, Colonel started something, it'll be the first time it's housed here at Loyola, where it's going to be a national community uh, uh, program. Oh. And it's 112 pieces Whoa. of adults. And it's, it's sponsored by the Sousa Foundation, so it'll be the John Philip Sousa Communi National Community Band. What a great idea. Yeah. And they will come and, and rehearse for two days and do a concert on July 12th, I believe it is. Yeah, I think so. Free, open to the public. And uh, the programming, we were talking about that a little bit earlier, the programming is basically the programming that he had, has used with the Marine Band. Something a little difficult, and as the program goes on, it becomes a little lighter. And it's I more of a, a salute to New Orleans, so we, oh. uh, we're we going to pull out all the stops and umbrellas. <laughs> That'll be fun. <laughs> well, you mentioned John Philip Sousa, and I know that uh, you either are or were the president of the John Philip Sousa Society. I st yes, I still am the president of the uh, John Philip Sousa Foundation. There may be uh, some people watching that are not really that familiar with John Philip Sousa. You want to say a few right. words about our great leader? Well, Sousa, who was the 17th director of the Marine Band, he was the leader from 1880 to 1892 and in many respects he is is uh, our national hero the, the the first the first composer to be featured on a postage stamp uh,
Welcome to our admission today. We're joined by uh, Colonel John Bourgeois and Dr. Joe Abair. Dr. Abair is the director of bands at Loyola and has been director of bands for the past 40 years. And uh, John Bourgeois was is the emeritus conductor of the United States Marine Band stationed in Washington. And they are known as the President's Own because they performed at the White House often and provided all the music at the White House. So um, uh, welcome to our intermission today. Thank you. Thank you. Um, can you talk talk to us about the program? Uh, we've we've already heard uh, the first half, and I think you performed on that first half, uh, uh, Colonel Bushwa. Would you like to talk about those works? Huh? Yeah, I, uh, the, the, what you've heard uh, are two dances from Swan Lake. It's a group of four characteristic dances, national dances. There's an an, an Italian dance, a Hungarian dance, a Spanish dance, and a mazurka. We will hear two, we've heard two, and we'll hear one on the second mm -hmm. portion of the concert. And these are transcriptions for band. And actually, uh, these performances are the very first performances. I've just finished the transcriptions. And uh, historically, bands introduced uh, classical music to the American public through m rather than orchestras because they were a portable element of, uh, of music. And so that tradition, which we've always had in the Marine Band, I'm trying to transfer here to my alma mater. I see. So these were orchestral works that you yes. uh, transcribed for, for concert for, band. For concert band. I see. Uh, well, um, tell us about the particular challenges of, of that. I mean, to take an orchestral work and, and take out the strings, who takes right. the string part? Well, that's, uh, there's no automatic process. You can look at the piece and say, what uh, are the most recognizable aspects, usually if they're wind play, uh, playing parts, solo flutes, solo clarinets, as you will hear in some of these pieces. But the string parts, uh, you'll find that the harmonies all fit together, and it's the same thing uh, in a band. If You can recognize the piece, hopefully. I see. Well, we'll look forward to that. Um, so, uh, well, let's ask Dr. Hebert. You, you, um, you've been the, the, the director of bands for so long, you've, you've obviously uh, developed a particular approach to concert programming. You want to tell us about why you picked this particular material? Well, first of all, uh, John started with us in 1996 uh -huh. as a visiting guest conductor, lecturer. So we always include a couple of the pieces that he has done. He sends them down, we read through them. If there are some uh, incorrect notes, we go through it. So it's a great learning process for our students. But usually on the concert, I'll try to start off as you saw uh, with a overture like can be and then I will bring our guest conductor out. And then uh, for the spring, I try to feature one of our students. And as you heard, Rhapsody in Blue, brilliantly performed by Jesse uh, Reeks. Uh, and then we go into what we call the concert band. The concert band uh, is a little different from the wind ensemble in that the wind ensemble is a very select group, a true, I uh, emphasize the word true, wind ensemble, meaning only 50 to 52 players, depending mm -hmm. on how many percussion instruments we need. Whereas a concert band is anyone, everyone from the university. They do not have to be a music major. In fact, some of the people in the wind ensemble also perform in a concert band on a different instrument. Really? Uh, to try to help out the saxophone players who really need to learn how to double on flute and clarinet. They'll play saxophone in the wind ensemble and play flute or clarinet in the concert band. Is there a different repertoire for these two different? Yes, entirely different repertoire. In fact, we don't repeat. Uh, I find it difficult to repeat anything uh, in less than seven or eight years. Huh. You know, I will let think. You kind of get tired of, yeah. of certain things. Uh, we invite a composer down each year. We had uh, a gentleman by the name of Mark Campbell. earlier, anyone in music education has to take three years of method classes, one year of strings, one year of woodwinds, and one year of brass and percussion. Uh, we also do something that's somewhat unique here at Loyola that I don't know if any other school does it. Anyone who is a percussion major in music education, after they've taken the two classes of woodwinds and brass, they can choose one of those instruments and then study with one of our teachers, not a graduate student, not a senior, 
one of the teachers that also teaches the rest of the majors, and they can learn on that instrument in a little more detail for at least a semester, which we feel as though helps out a great deal with percussionists, because they don't have a chance to play a wind instrument other than uh, the two years that they are in method classes. These method classes are run by John Reeks, who is uh, not with us today. They're playing an opera. He is the third clarinet, bass clarinet with the uh, Louisiana Philharmonic. And our new trumpet teacher, which we are thrilled, I know I am, that he's with us, soon to be Dr. Volz. Uh, just finished all his comprehensives a couple of uh, days ago, and he is going to do the conducting today. Uh, I've already informed the people in the wind ensemble that some of these people have already given notice that they will be challenging them for first chair. <laughs> so those people in the wind ensemble, beware. So here is our method class affectionately referred to as the bad band. Dr. Volts.